Hey guys, it's Sarah and today I'm going to be talking to you about the lunar eclipse that is occurring on January 10th Universal Time. So this lunar eclipse is in the sign of Cancer at approximately 20 degrees. This lunar eclipse is paired with the solar eclipse that occurred on December 26th. So my take on the metaphysical meaning of why eclipses come in pairs is because Solar eclipses typically signify new beginnings, manifestation, new opportunities as it goes along with the new moon. Whereas lunar eclipse, on the other hand, happens during a full moon, so they signify release and emotions. So I believe that metaphysically, solar and lunar eclipses come in pairs because first we manifest and co-create together new beginnings, and then we must release together and collectively everything that stands in the way of our manifestations occurring. So they happen in pairs to allow us to manifest and create new beginnings and let go of anything that's blocking us from creating those. So lunar eclipses are typically when the moon falls into the Earth's shadow. The moon will typically go away or it will turn into more of a blood red color. I know during the 2019 lunar eclipse, and I think it was January, it was a full blood red moon and it was so magnificent and so cool. Um, this year within North America where I live and this side of the world, we won't be able to see this eclipse, but in parts of Asia, Africa, um, Australia, etc., you will be able to see this eclipse. So regardless of whether you can see the eclipse or not, you will still feel its effects because it's still happening on the planet. And as we know now in this new earth, we are all one. So if one person is experiencing it and seeing it, we all are experiencing it. So there's three main themes for this lunar eclipse that I want to bring forth and allow you to understand and gain wisdom about so that you are able to utilize these powerful and profound energies to accelerate your ascension as well as accelerate the ascension of the entire planet. <laughs> so this lunar eclipse is so powerful in terms of release. As every full moon is a very great time for a release, a lunar eclipse is essentially a full moon intensified. Therefore, the release process is more prevalent and prominent on this day. With this eclipse, what exactly are we releasing on a collective level? Well, there's three main things that coincide with the three main themes. So essentially, it's the three main things that we're releasing are the three main themes of this eclipse. So, first of all, number one, there is going to be a lot, a lot, a lot of suppressed emotions that are going to come up on this lunar eclipse. The eclipse and the lunar energies has a lot to do with our emotions as the moon is a divine feminine aspect. So it kind of like the tides brings our emotions up so we can deal with them and then release them. So we're going to find that during this lunar eclipse, a lot of suppressed emotions from our childhood is going to come up. So this might be things that as a child, we've pushed down and suppressed as coping mechanisms or survival mechanisms so that we could survive. But they're coming up now because we need to resolve them in order to move from a survival into a creative mindset in life. So this doesn't just have to do with everybody that had childhood traumas. This can still be emotions from your childhood that you've buried in order to feel loved and accepted from other people that you might have forgotten about. They're stored in our subconscious mind and will be brought to the surface, to the top, tip top of the ocean to be resolved on this day. So it's very important before the lunar eclipse to try to go into your subconscious, to look at your shadow, to see what you've been burying because you don't want it to kind of come up in a negative way on the lunar eclipse. So the lunar eclipse can bring physical manifestation of suppressed emotions. So for example, say you have a suppressed emotion of being abandoned by your mother. You might then have a physical manifestation on the lunar eclipse of being abandoned by your mother or another female figure in your life. This event shows you that suppressed emotion that you still have stored inside of you because it's coming up on a physical manifestation level. That's why it's so important to go into your emotions before the lunar eclipse so that you can see what's there, release it and resolve it so that it doesn't have to come up in the physical because 
I know it's not really fun to have to deal with some physical things as they come up, so it's better if we can deal with them and release them before they come up in the physical. So definitely looking at your childhood emotions, things you might have suppressed. This can be going into some childhood traumas that you might have had to bring up these emotions, shine light on your inner child, connect with your inner child. You can do different inner child meditations or connect with that child to see, hey, what's stored in you? What, what can I release at this time? Ask yourself that because your inner child is always there and always waiting for you to talk to it. It is this vulnerable child that lays within and we all have this inner child and it's so important to connect with this inner child to find these stored emotions, heal them and release them. Second thing that we are releasing during this lunar eclipse is karma. <laughs> We've had a lot to do with karma ever since the 1212 portal which helped us release a lot of our karma from 2019 but we still have karmic cords with people that we might not know of or we might not have known in the past so that we could cut these cords back a, a month ago. So the lunar eclipse is going to really shine light on the deepest shadows of your karma and your karmic cords. This is a day that we are being called to release these karmic cords that are in the way of us manifesting and co-creating the new life on new earth that we would wish for. We might have manifested for us to have these beautiful balanced energies of love and peace and compassion and unity, but we might still be involved with someone in terms of friendship, relationship, parent, etc. that isn't really embodying those type of emotions and ways of being and likely you don't see in the near future that they will. So this could be you may have a cord with somebody that is not following these emotions and this cord is draining your energy. It's not allowing you to embody these energies in which you would love to embody because it's still keeping you connected to an old version of yourself, the old version of yourself that reflected these energies. So an example of this is I was friends with someone that for the longest of time was my best friend and we connected on a very, I guess, deep level to what I could connect to at that level of my conscious awareness but uh, over time and especially over this past year and the end of the year I realized this person does not embody those emotions and frequencies as I wish to embody on new earth and that I am doing deep inner work to release so I can fully embody because of this this person was at the time reflecting back to me my emotions, these lower emotions that I used to be involved with and experience. However, now as I'm shifting and this person is not choosing to do the inner work to shift, I have to let them go. I have to cut the karmic cords that are keeping me tied to these lower frequency emotions. And I just wanted to say there's nothing against this person or any person in your life that's choosing these lower emotions. Everybody's on their own path, but it may just not align with the path that you're currently on. So I really suggest for you to take some time out, meditate on all of your connections and try to figure out who may I be karmically tied to that is not embodying and expressing these higher density emotions and frequencies that I truly wish and truly will do the work to embody. This lunar eclipse allows us to release these karmic cords. It's such a powerful and profound time for release. So I would truly look into this so you can release all these karmic cords because a lot of these karmic cords also have to do with past lives. So there might be a past life in which you weren't able to speak your truth and you might be involved with someone that you can't be authentic or yourself with. This would be a physical manifestation of you and that person coming together again in this life so that you can karmically, you know, cut the cords and cut the cords, not necessarily in terms of person, you and this person, but cut the cords on you not being authentic, you not being able to step into your truth because that was one of the issues that I had with the person that I gave an example about. I wasn't able to be my authentic self. I could not speak my truth. Ever since I started to cut the cords, and I know I still have cords that I need to cut with this person, I was able to speak more on my truth. So it truly releases the karma that you have 
and allows you to step in and fully embody the person and life that you chose to manifest during the solar eclipse. I'm going to let you know the third biggest theme and most important thing you need to know about this lunar eclipse. I saved this one for last because I think it's the most profound and important one. Um, so over the past, I want to say since about 1010, ever since the 1010 portal on October 10th, we've been going through as a collective an intense purging of unbalanced masculine energies. We've been purging and letting go of all of these toxic, unbalanced masculine energies that we've been carrying with us in ourselves and within our DNA, within our energetic field for years and years and years. As a brief history, we're going to take it back a few thousand years. Um, during Lemuria and Golden Atlantis, we were in a balanced energy. We were balanced feminine and masculine. We were embracing and embodying both of these energies in a non-toxic way, which then led to an external manifestation of a balanced society. However, as different, um, so this is a whole other video in itself, as different cosmic forces came down into Atlantis, we kind of got distracted with power and ego which then led to the unbalanced masculine picking up energy and well the physical manifestation then of an unbalanced world aka it sinking underwater so after golden atlantis and lemuria people those who survived went to different places in the world to continue on this knowledge one of them being avalon within england it was a fifth dimensional place so those who are still lowered in the third dimension because of what happened in Atlantis were unable to necessarily see and go into Avalon and therefore everything about Avalon and the people was what's the best word disillusioned so people essentially and when I say people I kind of meet the Roman Catholics that took over the area saw all women all things to do with magic all things to do with intuition all things that had to do with just literally Avalon itself was seen as demonic, was seen as devil energy. They thought all women essentially worked for the devil. The Roman Catholics brought in this very, very strong patriarchal system of supporting one God, that God being a male, of course, and rules and systems in which worshipped and was in control by men. So therefore, if you weren't a man, you were deemed evil or you were deemed lesser than or weak. Women were essentially deranged to just being people who could spin clothes, bear children, and marry. It was not very good, but that had to happen as a reflection of moving into the third density. Flash forward to now. <laughs> We've been working hard as a collective to release these unbalanced toxic masculine energies so we can balance these energies once more between the masculine and feminine collectives. So. With this lunar eclipse, with all of these powerful and profound energetic gateways that we've just been blessed with right now, we've been purging so much of this toxic energy. I don't know about you guys, but I've seen so many physical manifestations of this unbalanced toxic masculine showing itself and the feminine not taking it. You see that in our society now when it's not acceptable for men to do the things that they used to be so freely able to do. We're able to now fight back against it, but we're able to fight back with love and balance and not necessarily shooing away the masculine, but inviting the divine masculine in. You see, the masculine template is like, we can't survive anymore. We can't do this. We need the feminine to help balance us. So the masculine is now craving this feminine. Therefore, both of them are eventually going back into this divine unification hence divine union all the awakening of twin flames recently and in the decade of the 2020s the lunar eclipse and the solar eclipse both had so much to do with this unification of balanced energies the solar eclipse was essentially the death of the masculine the death of the sun in turn is the masculine it has more masculine energies so with the solar eclipse we saw this masculine toxic masculine energies die dead completely die after the 12 12th portal 
all these energies that were leading towards this, it led up to the masculine, the toxic masculine dying, being reborn with the new manifestations that we created of a balanced new earth and with a new earth inherently shows the balance of masculine and feminine energies and then pairing with this lunar eclipse which represents the rebirth of the divine feminine it allows for now the masculine's born the feminine's reborn in both divine ways they can now unify and be completely balanced because the masculine's here the feminine's here the toxic things are falling apart, it's collapsing. Anything toxic about the feminine is also collapsing with this lunar eclipse because the lunar eclipse has so much feminine energy. A lot of the emotional childhood stuff that's coming up has to do with the, ma the maternal figures within our lives, so our mothers, grandparents, etc. And the day after this lunar eclipse is the 111 portal, which is literally a union portal of divine feminine and masculine energies. So if you add two and two together, it's the rebirth of the divine masculine, rebirth of divine feminine, and then the day after, union. So this eclipse brings in this the end of the patriarchy. We're going to see it in society not work anymore. In 2020, we're going to see this patriarchy completely collapse. And that is what we're releasing on just the 10th day of the new decade. We're releasing the entire patriarchal system. I don't know about you, but that's a big deal. <laughs> We're able to birth this new earth through the release of the patriarchal system because on a solar eclipse we manifested new earth, balanced energies, etc. Therefore, on the lunar eclipse, we're releasing the unbalanced energies and the patriarchy. <laughs> so this lunar eclipse is going to be so profound, especially given the fact that the day after is the 11 is the 111 portal. And I'll make another video about that closer to the time. But this lunar eclipse is just so magical and profound. And I really wanted to make this video to share the energies about it so that you guys can have a heads up about what to expect, some work you can do beforehand. And if you this really resonated with you, I'm going to be launching another mini course in a few days. I'll put the link in the description as soon as I launch it. It's going to go really, really, really in depth about all three themes that I brought up, as well as giving a lot of worksheets and exercises so you can work through these energies before the lunar eclipse so that you can fully release everything that you need to before this day so that on the day you're not sh seeing it kind of show up in a physical way which may pull on your emotional strings. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and I really hope you learned something new and I look forward to seeing you in my course if you choose to get it as well as if you follow me on Instagram Starseed Sloan I will be posting more about the lunar eclipse there as well as just other wisdom and stuff that I choose to share. So peace.